Do you remember ever learning about moment of inertia back in single variable calculus? Maybe you've seen it, and maybe you haven't. Either way, what we're going to do is take our new understanding of multiple integrals to clarify this often confusing subject. So let's move on to recall the definition of the moment of inertia. Let's say you have some solid body, capital R, sitting inside of our N, and is typically going to be, I don't know, two or three. And you want to rotate this about an axis. So think of a, a baseball bat or a tennis racket or your favorite sword, something like that. Then the moment of inertia is something that measures the resistance to rotation about that axis. It's kind of like an angular mass. We denote the moment of inertia capital I, and it is, of course, the integral of the moment of inertia element di over this region R, where di is equal to R squared dm. dm, of course, is the mass element, and R is the distance from that mass element to the axis of rotation. So if you integrate that over the entire body, that gives you the moment of inertia. Now, one of the things that is really nice about this is it has a strong physical intuition to it. Let's say you take a couple of different bodies that all have the same mass, but have that mass distributed differently with respect to distance to the axis about which it's rotating. Then the body with the lowest moment of inertia uh, spins the fastest, gets going more quickly, whereas the body with the higher moment of inertia, where the mass is distributed farther away from the axis, well, that takes a bit longer. And that's how moment of inertia works.